Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Chris. Today's video is all about my perfume wish list. Perfumes that I have tested and sampled and really would love a full bottle of. Some of these I've already purchased an even larger decant. Some of them are still sitting in my cart waiting for checkout and a few I have purchased within the past like week and a half and are on their way to me. Before I get started, if you have enjoyed my content and are not yet subscribed, I would love it if you would click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you are aware every time I upload a video or post something on my community board. And with that, I'm gonna jump right in. Now I'm gonna start my wish list with a bang. I'm gonna start with the newest release from Creed and it's called Queen of Silk. Now I haven't been thrilled with a lot of the Creed releases. I thought they were good maybe really good, but not great, and certainly not worth the price point. But the newest release, Queen of Silk, is one that I am really loving, and I got a really nice, generous decant from one of my subscriber friends out there, Lori, thank you so much. She sent me this lovely box, and I was really surprised how much I enjoyed Queen of Silk. So let's get a spritz here because it's so pretty, and I've been babying my little decant because I know I don't think I'll get a full bottle for a while. Oh, this is so good. So this is a resinous, spicy, woody tuberose with some syrupy fruits in the background. This is a big departure from my last Creed Love, which was Windflowers, which is more of a, a light, musky, fruity floral. This one is much more deep, much more dark. It's alluring, it's resinous. There are, there's myrrh in here but it's not overly incensey and it's not smoky at all. Now the tuberose is heady, but smooth at the same time. So the fruit in here is passion fruit. Now passion fruit tends to be light and tropical and fun and whimsical, not in here. It's syrupy and on the dark side, which kind of goes along with this very voluptuous, heady tuberose. So you have this heady tuberose, this syrupy, slightly sweet, passion fruit, a little bit of myrrh, patchouli. There is oud in here. There's wood and oud, oud. Thankfully the oud is not at all animalic and I get no hint of a skankiness or a barnyard oud. It just smells like woods, like rich, oops, rich deep woods. And the spices, I know there's saffron in here and the saffron is perfect because it doesn't go into that leather zone and I don't always love a leather forward saffron. Saffron can smell like leather. It just gives it a nice spiciness. And it doesn't smell like one particular perfume that I know of. It's more of a combination of two. If you have smelled Blue Heart by Tamin, take that perfume, take out the coconut, take L'Ente de Rouge, pull out that ginger, pull out that, I wanna say blood orange, and then combine the two, you're gonna get something very, very close to Queen of Silk. Maybe add a little bit of amber and add a little bit of woods and you're gonna get this perfume. It is absolutely stunning. This is kind of a showstopper, a head turner, something I would wear when I'm really dressed up and I wanna make an entrance or turn heads. Now seeing that this is a new release and prices are going to be on the high side and it is more of a, it's a very heavy perfume so I'm not gonna be wearing it. I wouldn't be wearing it at all really in the spring or summer. This is gonna be on my wish list, but it'll be on my wish list maybe more towards the fall. So on my wish list, but maybe towards the end of the year and a fabulous release by the House of Creed. The bottle is gorgeous as well. Speaking of Blue Heart, which has also been on my wish list for over a year, I really enjoyed it when I smelled it. Put it on my wish list with about 50 other perfumes and I've just been waiting for the right time to purchase. The right time to purchase was last week when So Avant Garde was having this 30% sale. I literally got a heads up the day of that So Avant Garde was having a 30% off sale, so I quickly posted it to my community board and my Instagram, and I bought three perfumes. One of them was Blue Heart, which is another beautiful, spicy amber floral that has a lot of similarities with Queen of Silk. So unlike Queen of Silk, where the flower is tuberose, the flower in Blue Heart is an iris, or more specifically, orris, orris butter. So it's kind of buttery, it's rich, it's a touch powdery, there's coconut in there, there are some spices, I wanna say, um, like Cipriol, which gives perfumes a, a spiciness, an earthiness. There's amber in this perfume, and a little bit of vanilla and musk 
in the dry down. It's another one that's very alluring, very sexy. Blue Heart I can see wearing in the summer. It's a tad lighter. It's not as deep and kind of rich like Queen of Silk. It's something that's a little bit more versatile. I could wear it on cold spring nights, date night in the summer, and that's one that I'm super excited for it to come to my house. The next one on my wish list was a very big surprise, and I found out about it from my mother, of all people. She had ordered her third bottle of her signature scent, which is currently Istanbul by Galavant. Thank you. I introduced her to that perfume. She loves it. She likes patchouli in general. So she ordered from a place called Perfumology, which is a place I highly recommend. They're a small brick and mortar store. They get your fragrances out quickly and they always add a little, some goodies, some samples in them. And so they sent her some nice samples. She went ahead and sent them on to me. And one of them was Molecule 01 Plus Patchouli by Eccentric Molecules, which I don't think I've ever smelled. And right when I smelled it, I picked up the phone, I called my mom and I'm like, mom, I can't believe you sent me this tester. I can't believe you do not like this perfume. And she said, oh, I love it. I saved the bigger one and sent you the smaller one. I want a full bottle. So suffice it to say, the bottle went on both of our wish lists. So just like all eccentric molecules, this fragrance is fairly simple. And it's basically, I wanna say ISO E Super, plus patchouli, but this patchouli is, is not challenging. It's a very easy, it's a green, light, smooth form of patchouli. There's no earthiness, it's no damp soil, it's not spicy, it doesn't smell like grass or ground or concrete. It's just like the easiest patchouli you can imagine. So if you like Cora Mandel, but you thought it was, you know, that patchouli can go a little bit on the wet concrete side, Molecule 01 plus patchouli is like the daytime easy wear version of Coromandel. It doesn't, it's stripped away all the extras. There's no incense, there's no white chocolate, but it's got that beautiful core that smells so good. So I immediately put it on my wish list. I found it over in Joma Shop, put it in my basket, and like a dummy didn't go to checkout because it was actually a pretty good deal. And then like the next day it was gone and it was gone. I could not find it anywhere. So I think some big channel somewhere, <laughs> some big perfume channel probably talked about this perfume because I couldn't find it for like two months. So I finally tracked it down. I found it at Scent Split and it's actually a pretty good price over at Scent Split. So that perfume is getting purchased and I will be able to take that off my wish list. but a fantastic fragrance that absolutely surprised me and I think it's a great perfume for any patchouli lover, particularly if you don't like the patchouli that tends to be a little bit earthy and a little bit challenging. It's gorgeous. So the next perfume on my perfume wish list is by BTSO. And some of those perfumes are just like two out of the box for me. I did appreciate Dirty Rice, but I didn't feel like I needed. I have a lot of rice perfumes. If you are a return viewer or subscriber, you know rice is one of my favorite notes. So I didn't feel like I needed Dirty Rice. It was too similar to some other perfumes I have in my collection, but it was well done. Um, so the reason why Sugar Addict went on my wish list is I took a couple samples, I took them to work, and I had a fun game with one of my coworkers. So she wore one, I wore another new release, and we walked around all day and had a good old time. And we both agreed that she smelled amazing. She was the better smeller. She smelled the best out of the two of us, and she was wearing Sugar Addict, and we, I just kept going up to her and saying, Caitlin, I wanna smell your arm, you smell so good. And from just maybe like four or five sprays, I could smell her all day long and we both agreed she smelled absolutely spectacular. So this is a very sweet perfume. It's, it's a very sweet, sugary, boozy perfume with spices, a little bit of cacao. To me, it smells like the top of a creme brulee where you brulee the top and it got really kind of crispy, crunchy and you took the top off, maybe added a little bit of rum, a little bit of cacao and made that into a perfume. That's what Sugar Addict smells like. It's very toasty, it's very warm, it's boozy, it's phenolic, it's 100% gourmand and I absolutely love it. Now I won't be getting a full, full bottle anytime soon because to me it just reads a little bit more because it's so sweet and boozy and sugary and vanillic. It reads a little bit more colder weather and even though it's still cold today, yes, it was like in the 40s, low 40s today, 
it's not going to be one that I'll be reaching for a lot in the spring and summer, so I decided I'm going to buy a 9ml decant from Scentsplit and put that on my wish list further down the year, but it's still on my wish list. It smells delicious, terrific new release. The next perfume is absolutely delicious. I have been loving it for, I want to say, two to three months. I'm now on my second 5ml decant right here, and it's called Sissa from Mind Games. Now, the reason I'm just blown away by this perfume, now the reason why I haven't purchased a full bottle is because I have a couple other perfumes in my collection that smell remarkably similar. This is in the same vein of Bianco Latte or Milk or Lost in a Dream, those type of caramel, milky caramel vanillic perfumes. This one, however, has a little bit of a twist. It's milky. It almost smells like a little bit of a powdery, fluffy marshmallow, although I'm pretty sure marshmallow is not in here, but it has that milky, vanillic, marshmallowy, caramel vibe. It's not quite as sweet as those other perfumes I just talked about, particularly Bianca Latte. I do not think this has caramel, but this has the note of sesame. So maybe take Bianca Latte, take milk, thin it a little bit, take out that dense richness, and add a warm, syrupy, sesame note, and then you're going to get Sissa. So another one that is on my full bottle, full bottle wish list, Another one that I'm not going to be jumping on getting that full bottle. Well, number one, because it's expensive. And number two, I'm just kind of have to look at what I have in that fragrance category, decide which ones I'm going to keep. And if I end up decluttering one, I might very well replace it with Sissa, but I just can't take this one off my perfume wish list. I was kind of hoping I would get done with the 5ml bottle and just get it out of my system. Well, nope. Got another one, haven't got it out of my system yet. Maybe by the time I'm done with this one. Delicious, so if you thought Bianca Latte and milk was a little bit too thick, creamy, and you didn't like it that sweet, and you love the note of Sesame Boy, you should really give this one a try. It is beautiful. Okay, so the kind folks over at EPC sent me over two Discovery sets, and I've been going through those sets maybe over the past two to three months and have been loving Several. The two that are at the top of my wish list are Irish-based fragrance. Let me turn off my phone. <laughs> so we have Iris Carmen and we have Amber Iris. These are beautiful. And another reason why I think these are on my wish list because I love to I love to think about wearing Iris in the spring. The spring and the summer is when I really like to wear Iris. It just well the irises bloom in the late spring. And I just feel like that's a perfect time to wear the fragrance. So let's start with Iris Carmen, which will be a great perfume for the spring and summer. This is gorgeous. If you love Iris and you love Pettigrain or Neroli, I highly recommend you getting your nose on this perfume. So this is Pettigrain and Iris and Amber and Vetiver. So it smelled like Neroli to me. I thought Neroli was in here. Neroli is like a very greenish orange blossom, like an orange blossom with a greenish touch. A lot of times Pedigrain or Pedigrain is almost too twiggy. It's too green and twiggy, but it doesn't smell like that in here. And that's why I thought it was Neroli. It smelled like a green orange blossom. It's such, it's such a beautiful, composition and then you have this iris so the iris is pretty and soft it's a little bit on the powdery side i would say it's a little bit waxy a little bit powdery it has a really nice non-vanillic sweetness or oh, a little bit of an ambery sweetness so it's not a heady floral it's a little bit sweet and there is vetiver in here vetiver oftentimes can be a little bit too grassy a little bit too earthy it's a really nice vetiver, like the vetiver. It reminds me of the vetiver in Balda Afrique. It's very, very pleasant, but you're going to recognize it. So it's it's fresh, it's clean, it's floral, it's a little bit green without being screechy. It's not soapy, it's just so pretty, but you do need to love like a Neroli or a Pettigrain, easy Pettigrain. And I would say it's a little bit earthy, which may be in part from the vetiver, but um, there's also a little bit of patchouli, and I wanna say fig leaf, that's what's also in here. I don't really get the, the fig leaf that much. I just detect a really pleasant, nice greenness. So 
The reason why I say it's not for everyone is because I did wear this to work and a couple people thought it smelled great. One person, one of my friends did not like it. She thought, mm, that's, it's okay, but it's not something I would wear. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I will say that my particular friend who didn't like it, she's really into like sweet, warm, ambery vanilla perfume. She's not really into like fresh floral fragrances. So that's probably why she didn't like this one. But I think it is one of the best Pettigrain Neroli perfumes out there. The next one is actually one she really liked because I wore this one to work also. So this is called Amber Iris. Now this is on my wish list, but this is going to be lower down in the wish list, maybe later summer, early fall, because it is an amber-based fragrance, even though it has iris in it. This is stunning. Amber, myrrh, patchouli, and of course iris. And this goes in a complete different direction as um, Iris Carmen. I wanna say this has labdanum in it. If it doesn't, it smells an awful lot like labdanum. Labdanum is part of the Amber Accord, but to me it's like sweet and leathery. So this has a really nice, um, sweet, leathery, ambery quality to it. I think this has a little bit of incense. Maybe it's myrrh, but it's very warm. It has a little bit of spiciness not cinnamon, not saffron. Um, I can't tell you what spices are in here, but it's just has the littlest s subtle hint of spices and a really nice woody dry down. I'm sure there's some sort of non-specific woods. I would guess cedar in here. Absolutely beautiful. Again, on the wish list, a little bit down on the wish list, not the very top because this is going to be something I'm really going to love more in the colder weather. Although you could wear it kind of like summer date night or if you live somewhere where if you're in the Southern Hemisphere where it's getting cold or you live somewhere where it's not, doesn't get really, really hot in the summer. And the nice thing about this brand is that they're from London. I know they're from England, but Ariel Shoshana in Washington or the outskirts of Washington, D.C., they carry this line too, so you can get it in the US. So a perfume I've had on my wish list for several months and I can finally take it off my wish list. It literally just arrived at my house 10 minutes ago, so I had to take a quick break. Is this one by Bond Number no. 9. It's called New York Flowers. Look at the, first of all, look at this beautiful bottle. So the perfume is as pretty as the bottle. I am so excited to wear this. The spring and summer, gosh, this is just summer, spring and summer in a bottle right here. And I bought it because Joma Shop was having a sale, another one I posted on my community board. And so I went in and scooped up a couple of bond number nines that have been on my wish list. So why was New York Flowers on my wish list for so long? Well, it's on my wish list because it was on my wish list because it's just really, really pretty. It's a beautiful floral perfume that also has a very unique note or accord. It's got the Kier Royale drink accord. So a Kier Royale is actually a drink that has, um, that's made of black currant liqueur. It's very, very dark. So it is a liqueur made of black currant and you add champagne. So it's basically a champagne black currant drink. It is absolutely delicious and it does have this syrupy, dark, really nice, non-cloying, sweet, fruity aspect to it in addition to some beautiful flowers. Now, I think the flowers in here are iris and rose, but I get something like a tulip. With everything combined, maybe it's from the Kier Accord, the flowers kind of smell like a little bit like a tulip, and I think there's jasmine in here. So iris, rose, jasmine, to me, come off smelling a little bit like a tulip. It also has um, it also has a touch of a green note. So there is, I want to say the note is green pear, but to me, it smells like the skin of a green pear. Not the pulp, not the fruit, not the flesh, but the skin. So it has a very light, non-bitter greenness. You've got the florals, you've got the cure and a little bit of musk in the background. This just smells like you are in the middle of a field that has flowers just blooming all around you, and you've got this beautiful Kier champagne that you're sipping on, and you're wearing this beautiful sundress, and you're about to scurry off or scamper off to a fancy brunch or lunch or somewhere fun with friends, and you're kind of dressed up and floofy and floral. I absolutely love it. So, so excited 
to have this and that is why it was on my wish list for so long. Now I can take off. Another perfume on my wish list and I'm just babying my sample and it is by Navitus, another one from Navitus that is called Sartorial Nui, a perfume that I hear nothing about and I can't believe it because this is such a good, really unique vanilla perfume and I found this by going through the discovery set that Navitus sent me and I got to this one and I sprayed it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this smells so good. I could not stop wearing this. I put it in my backpack, I put it in my purse, I sprayed it at night. It's very addictive. I just, it's a perfume. It's a scent that I just cannot get enough of and to me, this is a great unisex year-round vanilla. So this vanilla is very different. It has a little, it's got some aromatics in it, but it doesn't smell too herbal. I mean, it has lavender and sage, I wanna say. So, and tonka and vanilla. So to me, if you could have, if there ever was a great vanilla spa scent, in my opinion, it would be right here. Well, you couldn't have a spa scent that was too foody or too gourmand or overly vanillic. You would have to have one, in my opinion, that had a little bit of aromatics in it. This has sage and lavender, but it has tonka and vanilla, and the combination comes together to form this very addictive, pleasant, not quite fresh. It's vanillic, but it's bordering on fresh and certainly not soapy. It's not soapy at all, even though it has lavender and thyme. It's got enough vanilla and tonka to kind of counteract those notes, so it really is a beautiful, unisex fragrance. I can see men and women both loving this year round, day, night. Like I said, I wear it all the time, day, night, work at home, <laughs> bedtime, running around. I cannot get enough, I'm babying it. So super high on the list. I just got Splendor Absolute maybe a month and a half ago. And that is a very fancy, special perfume, expensive too. So I'm gonna wait a few months before I get this one. They're both beautiful vanillas very, very different. They could not be more different, but this is a gorgeous vanilla. And another perfume from Navitus that I'm dying to get my hands on, and it is very high on my wish list. I anticipate I will have it by the summer. The next one on my perfume wish list is one by Andrea Mack, and I've been, I've gone through several, and even though I love the creativity from the line, I love the point of view. A lot of them didn't kind of align with my taste until I smelled this beauty. And then it was like, whoop, right at the top, very tippy top of my wish list. It is called Ceramic. If you love a perfume that smells like clean laundry, you love that fresh, clean laundry smell, you have got to get your nose on this because this may very well be my absolute favorite. And I do love that scent profile. I get it, that scent profile is a little bit simple for a lot of people that like, why would I wanna buy a perfume, spend money on something that smells like fresh laundry when my laundry smells fresh? <laughs> this does smell like fresh laundry, but it has a perfumey quality. So when you walk around wearing it, you're not necessarily going to smell like a bounce fabric softener, you're going to just smell like clean and fresh and soft and a little bit powdery to the nth degree. I absolutely love this perfume. This has musk and freesia, two notes that can really come off screechy and kind of give you a nose punch. It is done so well in this perfume. And oftentimes that combination can smell very, very shampoo-y. It does not smell shampoo-y at all. Let me spray this. Oh my gosh, this is so good. It is smooth and creamy and fresh and dewy. There's a dewiness to it. It's a little bit, it has a little bit of a greenness to it. I want to say this has grass as a note. I don't get any grass, but it just has a little bit of a dewy greenness, but it's not soapy. It doesn't smell like shampoo or hairspray, it is so good. So I imagine, so to me, this smells like you have this beautiful, huge ceramic bowl. Like you are so fancy, you use the best fabric softener, the best laundry detergent, and you keep your freshly laundered clothes in a gorgeous handmade ceramic bowl. And right before you put your laundry in, you take like the nicest lotion or luxury face cream, and you kind of smooth that 
on the inside of your ceramic bowl. You just blend that in. You put your fancy laundry on top, laundry detergent that you FedExed from France, and that's how this smells right here. Mm. Gosh, this is so addictive. Like I said, this is at the very, very tip top of my list. This will be a full bottle heading to my house in the next week or so. Another one on my wish list, this beauty right here, the prettiest travel case I ha own, and I own a bunch, and this is Passion de l'Amour by House of Sillage. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is my favorite fruity oud of all time. This is an ambery floral fruity oud that is just stunning. This is a head turner. It's gorgeous. It's got a little bit of saffron. It's got a little bit of I want to say Cipriol to give it a little bit of that, you know, sexy, earthy spiciness. The fruit in here is raspberry. So this is a dark syrupy raspberry that is coating some wood, including oud. Now for the first like two, three, four minutes, you start, you have a hint that there's an oud in here. Like, oh, is that oud? But it never goes, it never crosses into the skanky or animalic zone. It gets close. Close enough that you're saying to yourself, oh, I think this is oud in there, but then it backs off and then it just becomes a woody perfume. It becomes a an amber floral woody perfume. It's absolutely stunning. So yes, a fruity oud with a very beautiful floral perfumey quality. It's got flowers in here, but they're just blend blended so well together. I can't really pick out one particular flower, I would assume. There's jasmine and rose in here, but again, it's just floral. It just has this beautiful ambery floral sexiness to it very much a date night very much going out very much i'm dressed up i want to smell really good maybe turn heads dressed to the nine sexy sexy right here top of my list and i'm a dumb dumb this was on i saw this on sale for 60 percent off and i should have bought it then i put it in my basket and then the next day wasn't on sale anymore i'm gonna kick myself so the next time this goes on 50 percent off sale i will get it but I'm loving my travel. It's a beautiful, beautiful perfume. Okay, so the last two perfumes on my wish list are going to be so good for the summer months, the warmer months. The next one I talked about a couple months ago, it's called Penguin by Zoologist. Boy, I try and try and try to get on board with these Zoologist fragrances, and they really do a good job of using their artist, artistry to make some really interesting creations. I just can't get on board with many of them. They're just out of the too far out of the box and they don't really align with kind of my fragrance preferences. Even though I appreciate the artistry behind them, I want to smell good and I want to enjoy the perfume I'm wearing. So I only have one zoologist in my collection, but the next one I will be getting is called Penguin and it's super, super unique. And that brand does really try to encapsulate or make a, create a fragrance that personifies the creature on the bottle. And this fragrance really does. This is a cold fragrance. This fragrance smells like what I imagine a penguin would smell like. Literally, there are aldehydes. I wanna say there's an ice cube accord, like Antarctic air. There's juniper, there's a little bit of leather, there's oak moss. To me, this really smells like someone was wearing a leather jacket, a really nice leather jacket, and decided to take a hike after this big, huge snowfall in the middle of some very green, fresh evergreens. And they walked around and got that beautiful cold air. And they walked around long enough where that cold, snowy air is just stuck to the jacket. And when they come home, they take off the jacket and they make themselves like a gin fizz. So they've got sparkling water, that's the aldehydes. They have a little sprig of juniper put some ice cubes in it, and they've still got their leather jacket next to them, so the aromas together really smell like this perfume. I do like it, that really changes in the dry down. It gets a lot more warm, and the leather really comes out, and I can get a little bit of that mossiness, and I wanna say there's probably a little bit of patchouli in here too, but it's really this beautiful fragrance. I do think most people would say it leans masculine, but um, masculine, unisex leaning masculine, but it's something I would love to smell on somebody. So I might buy it for Pat so I could wear it from time to time, but it, I, it's just such a unique, gorgeous fragrance that I think will be really, really good on these upcoming hot summer days. And the last one that is at the very tippy top of my wish list, I will be getting a full bottle 
within the month is thanks to a beautiful subscriber friend, Lori. Thank you again. She sent me this decant of Sal E. Lemont by Carna Barcelona. Oh my gosh. I This is a simple, I would call it a simple fragrance, but it's done so, so well. If you, I like freshies. I love citrusy fragrances. Citruses are hard to do. It's hard to make a citrus fragrance that's really appealing, that doesn't smell like a cleaning product, that's not screechy, that's not sharp or harsh. This one is just about perfection with regards to a really good, like a lemon lime type of a fragrance. I fell in love with Christian Dior Homme Cologne, the 2013 version, several years ago, and I've been trying to get a bottle of that. That just smells like the best lemonade and it became discontinued. So the only bottles that were available were on the secondhand websites and they were going for an astro, a ridiculous amount. And I just kind of put it out of my mind and gave up, even though it was always in the back of my head, like, gosh, it would be really nice if they came out with it again or re-released it or something came out that was just as delicious. Well, I'm telling you what, if you loved that perfume and you've been wanting to get something as a nice substitution or something that fills that gap, it is right here. I'm not saying they're the same, but they are both beautiful, citrusy, musky, floral fragrances. I wanna say the floral, which is in the background here, is neroli, and it goes so well with this lemon lime. Has a little bit of musk. I'm telling you, this is gorgeous. And for a, like a lemon lime, freshy, it has an effervescence to it. It's just like a cocktail. It's something I would put an ice cube in it and drink on a hot day. It's so delicious. This has great lasting power. Like I've sprayed it, I've worn it a couple times and actually the dabbers that I sprayed the first couple days, I got it. I could smell it 24 hours later. It's that good. So thank you again, Lori, for this beautiful fragrance that is literally at the top of my list. I will have it in my hot little hands in the next month or so. So you will be seeing it for my summer videos. So that's it, my perfume wish list. Some of these have been on my wish list for like a year and a half. Some of these I won't be getting right away, maybe towards the end of the summer, the beginning of the fall. Others, I can assure you, I will be getting in the summer because they will be so perfect. They will be in heavy rotation when the warmer weather comes and I can't wait to get my hot little hands on them. So before I leave, I would love it if you would tell us all down below what fragrances are on your perfume wish list. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you enjoy my content, I would love it if again, you would hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. And if you like my content also, give me a thumbs up. It does help the algorithm and it pushes my videos out to new viewers and potential subscribers. And so that's it. Thanks again for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me. And I will see you on the next one.